Nice. So uh, tonight we're joined by um, Chad Vandiver. Um, Chad, I, I thought of um, all the things that I could ask you, and I figured it'd be good if uh, you just started with, you know, where you went to high school and kind of your a little bit about your high school experience, just so people who maybe don't know who you are, some new parents or something like that, uh, learn a little bit about you. Uh, yeah, I went to Harlem High School. I wrestled a couple of years, uh, three years with the Harlem Cougars. Youth club, IKWF, went to Harlem. Uh, after that, went to Northern Illinois. So, but Harlem, you were you wrestled. Um, you made it to the state tournament. How many times? You know, conference. You know, I could go through um, the record yeah. books, but let's see. Um, I I was uh, first guy to Harlem, I think, to win the conference four times, and then I went down state twice. Didn't have the best of luck down there. Won a couple matches, but didn't. Uh, you know, I lost a close one, and then that guy lost. You know, you had – I think your guide, if it's still that way, had to make, make it to the semis at least. Yeah. And uh, that didn't happen. So, yeah, I went down state twice. It was uh, it was great. I wrestled in kind of one of the golden eras. I had, I think – I think in my four years, seven or eight guys placed in the state while I was there, and we were always first or second in the conference with uh, Oniga. So, that was a lot of fun. And Belvedere. Yeah. And East was hey, good. That was a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> um and you were what what years were you in high school because you were leaving when i was kind of getting started but um, yeah i think we might have been two years apart or maybe three because i was 99 to 03 okay i was 06 so i think you were three years ahead yeah you were a freshman i was a senior so yeah and uh and on your team you had you had like you said you were on a pretty pretty great uh set um you know, team, uh, when you were a senior, when, how old, when was Steve, was Steve Zanoni there before you? Yeah, Steve, uh, Z Zanoni, Sindel, Ferry, Swanson, they were all two years older than me. It was Dosky, Enderly, Pond, they were all one year younger than me, so I was right, right in the middle there. Got you. And yeah, you said how many qualified for a state year, junior, senior year? I don't know. I think I remember at one point this number sticks out in my head. I think there were seven guys in my four years that placed in the state tournament. You know, Nick Deary, uh, I could probably name them. Jim, Nick, uh, Cal, Brandon. Oh, I'm probably missing all Brad Sindel. Um, I don't know who I'm missing. Yeah, but there's some good guys. And, and you know, Marty, I'd ask you, I mean, yeah, just so um, – I mean, you have a better. I was more of a peer to uh, a peer to uh, Chad. So, when when we were going through it, what can you what do you remember about Chad um, at Harlem? Oh, they always had great tough kids. Chad was a great wrestler, grinder, tough, loved to hand fight. I mean, yeah, he was fun to watch. I mean, that was back when Harlem had some really good wrestlers. We had a pretty good team too, though. At those times, we we battled back and forth for the conference and regional and stuff like that but it was a lot of fun it was just the whole conference was great back then you know everybody i mean there was somebody had somebody on every team had somebody that was halfway decent we had so many state qualifiers back then and stuff it was a like you said it was like the golden age it was kind of the whole thing in the conference yeah and um do you remember chad who who you wrestled from hananiga um your junior senior year oh yeah um brett frankie uh, who else? Oh man, I can't remember. Your conference all. final. I, 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 mean, I do have this stuff. I don't there. remember that stuff. I you know I remember I wrestled um East my freshman year in the final of the conference, but that stuff gets blurry, man. But uh, yeah, well, I, you remember, know it's cool, so... I remember literally, I mean, you know, again, Tanaga, not to get across the line, but just biting and scratching and clawing, you know, to, to, to get through that semi-final wrestle back or the semis of whatever it was to get the sectionals or state you're running a decal or Hananiga or whatever it may be but yeah a lot of good match <laughs> yeah what i'm going to try to do this last year i i had all the uh coaches especially marty and and dan mcnames give me as much in from all of the past conferences so i'm going to go through the next couple of uh, months and stuff and try to continue to upload the past history so we can kind of go back and talk about you know past experiences groups of people and then things like this lead to uh, the conversation where we can you know talk about you know you after high school you went on to wrestle at northern illinois um 
And so just what, what was your college experience like at Northern and yeah. well, it, was, it was good. Um, you know, I, I wanted to challenge myself, to, uh, try to wrestle the highest level and, uh, you know, they, they wanted me to wrestle there. I didn't really get much of a scholarship to go there. Uh, paid my dues my freshman year, just, just really liked to train, you know, we just trained harder. I had better partners. So then my retro freshman year, I just, you know, started all the matches and I uh, won 20 some matches and, uh, you know, beat some ranked guys was right in there. And then uh, a couple more years, you know, I, I had a bad thing in my knee. Wasn't too bad, but I'd take like a quarter season off and wrestled in, I think, three conference tournaments. I won more than I lost. Uh, when uh, Gary from the star was, was doing that thing a while, a year or two ago, he gave me my record. I don't remember 50 or 60 wins and 20 or 30 losses, you know, something like that yeah. in, in college. I don't know if that counts all the opens and then, uh, I used to just go to all the junior or university freestyle and Greco tournaments, whatever it was, a regional or a – try to get as many matches in as I could. So, yeah, I wrestled there four years. And then, you know, you transitioned after that into um, the Greco uh, competition in the world level, um, senior level uh, Greco. But were, you said you were doing it. Were, do I, were you competing in Greco throughout college too? Yeah, I would just go to, you know, the couple in the summer. I'd go to the, they call it the FIBA juniors, you know, the U-20s and the and the university nationals. Just go to that stuff. Get more matches. Usually do both styles. Yeah. Yeah, I wasn't that good. So I needed, then, needed matches. Yeah, well, we all need the stuff to improve on. But um, after college, you went into to senior Greco stuff. So how did you kind of like transition into that and what made you go into yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I think it was '06. I uh, went to the Northern Plains. You know, my grandpa and I got in, got in the truck, drove out there. I saw it on the internet and won a few matches. And afterwards, they handed me this thing. Oh, come, come to World Team Trials now. Oh, well, that's that's cool. So I went to that and just started trying to ask people how to do Greco. I'd just go to the U.S. Open by myself and go there. And uh, and then after I qualified for the trials, you know, my my college coach at the time, you know, he was he was a good guy, hard worker, didn't didn't really love that part of it. So, you know, just kept trying to do what I could and grab some guys in the room from time to time and, you know, Joe Henning or Packet Steel and see if they'd go Greco with me for 20, 30 minutes. And then uh, after, um, yeah, my fourth year there, I just decided to uh, go out to Colorado Springs. I was coaching with Team Illinois, uh, 07, I think. And uh, somebody there was asking me and, about myself and I said, I have went to the U.S. Open and World Trials, and they said, you should go to Colorado Springs. So I got the chance to go out there and ended up getting to go out there for a while. Yeah, and how was that? I know, um, you know, I know there were some good uh, Greco teams out there training a lot. So how, what was that experience like? It was great. I mean, I, I was real – I was just so honored. You know, I was just ready for an opportunity, just hungry, and I just went out there and just went as hard as I could. And, you know, we trained – twice a day and climb the mountains and I got to go all over the world it's when I got there was right the year they won the world championship so you had like all I mean a, a couple dozen resident guys there all the military all the clubs were yeah. strong you know Joe Warren Lindsey Durlocker Brad Varing Ruiz all these guys uh, buyers and all these guys that won all the medals so I got to kind of just hop in with that and um you know, I was very grateful. I got to for several years there. I got to go overseas a couple times a year. Towards the end, I went over, kind of did some stuff on my own, wrestled in probably ten or fifteen different countries. You know, I'd take a third or a fifth, or you know, I got to wrestle two Olympic trials, two thousand eight, two thousand twelve. Yeah, so it was good. And when uh, you were out, twenty ten, I was second at the U.S. Open. I I thought I had a good chance to make the team that year, but uh. In the finals, I got knocked out, headbutted, my foot snapped in half, and that put me out for a little while. <laughs> well, I know I've seen, you know, there's some, what's cool now is that, you know, the internet lives, so you can find so many cool videos, and I think there's a couple where one's good, I, I you know the one that, um, what's the one, you got thrown, you got thrown. Oh, uh, yeah, <laughs> bad. But, but there were some, there's some other ones that I've seen that, you know, what I love about Greco is it's so much about the battle as opposed to the moves and the the technique, you know, and it, it seems to bring about a different mental approach to the game. So like, what do you think about it? 
Yeah, I mean, Gre Greco is very physical. You know, I mean, when you're seeing these matches, especially at the junior, you know, the senior level, and there's not much going on, that's because both guys are really fighting. You know, that's when you're just hand fighting with somebody, you know that if any, either one gives an inch, they're going to get blast doubled, right? It's that same feeling, but just all the time because you, you can't really go anywhere, you know? You, you can't you can't hide so you know if you let up put your head down you're going to get front head locked and thrown if you let somebody get under your arm you know they're going to get into your body and suplex you so yeah i got lost that went viral ryan mango threw me at the u.s open you know yeah i, I threw him you know the period before that but you know he really he he got a i had him in front headlock and he ducked his head under and body locked me yeah. and just launched me yeah yeah, it was an incredible throw. I mean, he's an un unbelievable athlete. Um, sure. Getting to uh, train with those guys, like, I mean, again, Joe Warren and Lindsey Durlacher are two, you know, of the, I mean, one's nickname is the baddest man on the planet, right? Um, and then Lindsey Durlacher is, you know, I got to meet him a little bit because of being at Illinois. He reached out uh, when I first went to college there. He's just always seem to reach out to people, but he seemed like a really cool guy and, and such a great competitor. I mean, um, there's a story that Mark Johnson always tells that, you know, a football coach came and, uh, said one of the wrestlers was beating up his offensive lineman. And then he said, well, what was his name? And he said, it was Durlacher. He's like, that was my 118 pounder. So, uh, it was just the idea that, you know, he's very tough and, um, a physical guy so what was that like with those guys I, it was great you know those were the guys i looked up to and then you know i, I moved in the training center and i walked down and i saw this little picture of brian Erlacher with a little d in front of it on somebody's door i go oh that must be Lindsay's room so yeah he was tougher nails so was joe and so were all the guys that were like five six seven eight nine ten there was a big stable of guys so um yeah joe joe and Lindsay beat me up and finally i got tougher so um, yeah. taught me a lot of stuff uh Lindsay was definitely a character wild man and he uh you know without his fifth place finish at the world in 07 there'd be no world title ever for Greco so it's a pretty uh pretty big deal and actually Joe wasn't even on that team the reigning world champion from 2006 so they, they there's another Illinois guy Joe Betterman that was but oh yeah, yeah. They, they won it without the reigning world champion and he's actually the last world champion yeah and what was um, what was the experience like, like at the training center, obviously you're getting super elite level practice partners and, you know, uh, training circuits, but like, what's the, is it like a college program where you kind of interact with people or people develop like relationships and then kind of like start to live a, a kind of a life and then train or what is it similar or different from college? Yeah. I mean, there's, there's certain certain people are on different roads. I mean, there was guys that were at the end of their career that were 30, 35 years old and had families. And there were younger guys like me that were in their mid twenties that were just hungry and didn't have any money. So uh, experiences differ out there. Um, you know, some guys were going to college. So I finished out there they were to, to do that. Um, it's a big family. The Greco community is pretty small, uh, you know, so different coaches coming in for camps from various clubs and, even though everybody's competing against each other, you know, you go overseas together with the Marine team or the New York AC guys or whatever, and you get pretty close. So, you know, everybody literally beat the snot out of each other in the room, but pretty good friends, you know, I mean, we, yeah. we knew we had to, to, to make each other better. So, you know, well, again, I mean, again, especially I, I talk about this a lot, like wrestling is such an interesting sport because it, it, it molds relationships through battles. Like people don't recognize, uh, cause they're not really, uh, aware of what it looks like to, to train, uh, constantly with somebody who really wants to, to be a, a winner or a champion, right? Like you, you develop, um, um, a, a real honesty, a respect for people when they give it their best and you're giving your best and stuff like that. So, Obviously, you develop that regardless of whether or not you like somebody or not. Um, that's what wrestling is all about, I think. At least it is for me. I think it's always fun to to interact with people that you know that you can battle with, um, and they're going to help you by that. You know, it's just fun. Um, so, yeah, that's cool. So you went from Greco into coaching, obviously. Um, 
you know, tell us about where you've been because, you know, I, I know, I know you coach at SEM and now you're doing something different. So where have you been since yeah. uh, that stuff? Uh, 2017, my wife and I moved out to uh, Northeast Pennsylvania. She started uh, the women's program at Wyoming Seminary. They had a really good men's team. They're a, they're a prep school. Um, so they're a private school like Blair Academy. And uh, our mission was to run a elite developmental program for high school girls like the Blade Sisters, right? That were just smearing everyone and needed to kind of get pushed. So we, we did that and uh, I helped, I got to help her. First couple of years, I was pretty active with the boys. And then, you know, my, my kids came and I still helped with them, but didn't travel as much with the boys team. But uh, my wife and I worked pretty hard on that, uh, on that women's team. Uh, we traveled to Japan, Russia, Estonia, Austria. We hosted like a dozen different countries at our school for tournaments, Mongolia, all sorts of different people. And um, in 2021, we went to junior world championships in Ufa, Russia, and uh, Kendi and Karina Blades were on that team. And uh, that was the first junior world title for the women. That was a really good team. Had like Kylie Welker and Amita Lur and um, Shilson. So uh, that program is just uh, still going strong. We moved to Erie, PA. My wife uh, took the head coaching job at Gannon University. It's a Division II school. Uh, and for women, one, two, and three all wrestle together in college. And uh, I'm helping out at doing a, a wrestling academy here. And we have a boarding school at the Erie Sports Center. We have Erie Prep. So we have a couple of girls that uh, are going there and, and uh, we're, we're – uh, We've been to a couple tournaments, so putting together a uh, focus on the girls and um, maybe some Greco guys. Obviously, with the club, we're doing all three styles, but you know we're not trying to poach everyone's best male folk style wrestlers. More just be a club they can come to once or twice a week if they want to blend in, and then maybe in the next year or two we'll start the boys varsity stuff. But probably have different coaches for that. And so you're so you said you're at a prep school. Yeah, well, I'm actually, I'm, I, yeah, I'm, at, I'm the director of international wrestling at Erie Sports Center. And then uh, at Erie Prep Academy, we have uh, have wrestlers there too. So okay. they, they kind of come for the sports and, and go to the school. And it's like a, there's a postgraduate basketball team there. Uh, next year, okay. there'll, be, there'll be more official varsity sports. We're just starting off with a couple. Cool. Yeah, I guess uh, that'll be interesting to see how that goes over the, over the next 12 months like so do you not you're saying you don't recruit because of that or you don't recruit for that or will you uh start recruiting for postgraduates or uh seniors or something like that same deal at seminary we just have a program and if people want to come you know I'm not really recruiting anybody i really don't have time for that but <laughs> we, yeah. we have a couple girls there that we had relationships with before that uh live closer to this area so they're we have a, a coach from mongolia here she was fifth at the Olympics, three world bronzes. So she's kind of taking the charge on the coaching, and then my wife helps too, since we're a we're we're in a, a, in a, a club. Gotcha. So you you're focusing more on um, the development, like a developmental program, uh, from young older throughout all ages, right? Yeah, yeah. We we have a youth club as well. My brother-in-law Tom, he was all American at Clarion. He he runs a lo local youth club, and then. You know, the, the wrestlers in the academy are looking for a little bit more, you know, especially for the girls because they do folk style in high school and college, they do freestyle. So some of these girls, you, you can build a schedule for them, 10 or 12 tournaments that are all freestyle. And... Yeah. So, yeah. How does that work, uh, the difference between girls and, and, and like high school folk style, right? Like, because there's obviously, if you're really good, obviously, Marty, you know this about uh, the Cassiope sisters have been doing a lot of uh, traveling with wrestling and stuff like that. But because it's not as uh, populated with athletes, um, they don't have the same type of uh, consistency of tournaments. So if somebody's trying to go to the high level, it almost is easier just to do freestyle throughout high school and kind of like transition into um, the national program or whatever, you know, um, cadence, uh, Didick from, um, Freeport. She's a girl that I've coached before. And, um, like she's kind of in a similar situation where she's choosing to kind of spend more time in the senior level freestyle realm. But is that just how it is? Like in the female group? 
I, I, I don't know if Marty was going to jump in, but I, yeah, I think just for some of them, it's just hard for them to get tough matches. So yeah, they're, they're looking to get the, go to the super 32s and the tournaments and those types of tournaments. Yeah. So with the, with the girls and the women in the high school and like in the IHSA, it's folk style wrestling, but college is freestyle, correct? Yeah. And everything else is freestyle, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, that doesn't make sense to me then. <laughs> yeah, it's it's like baseball and softball. You know, for what it's not my choice, but somebody chose that women play softball in in right. college and, and Olympics, so that's what they do in high school. Yeah, it you is know, interesting how it's hard for us to get on like a a smart like a effective plan or whatever. But go ahead, Marty. You know, Chad, you're kind of a success story that a lot of people don't know about. It's too bad that somebody, of course, our newspapers don't do anything anymore with wrestling. But, I mean, your whole history from the beginning to where you are now is incredible. I mean, you you were at the world level. Now you're teaching world level people. And there's not many people like that around. You know, you've made a commitment. Obviously, you and your wife have the same commitment. I think it's awesome. I'm I'm totally impressed with what you're doing. Well, th- thanks. That means a lot. I just had a lot of fun with it, you know. So wrestling took me, yeah, you know, I was a I was a late starter, took me all over the world. And I'm very yeah. great grateful. So it's it's nice when you get to meet up and we've had a special program where you get to be with kids that are really motivated and that's fun. I mean, grassroots is great too, but you know, when you're with motivated kids that are in high school and that's that's fun. Yeah. Well, you know, that brings up a good point. Um, one of the things I wanted to talk about, you know, is is the conference and, and the area of Northern Illinois wrestling, because, you know, this is what the podcast is all about. It's for connecting people. And one of the things that I think Marty and I have talked about before and Dan and everybody, but during those golden eras, there were there was like a, a camaraderie amongst um, the athletes that were, was pretty cool. And it always, it pushed everyone. And it was a, like a local like connection. Everybody trained together. You know, I, I talk about Marty, I, you know, I used to go up to the Hanigas high school room and uh, I trained with Brandon so much at Harlem, you know, luckily it was during that time where nobody even asked whether or not I went to school there, you know, like right now, obviously uh, we can talk about how complicated it is to do that. Like, um, but I used to just go lift and, and hang out with the Harlem guys and, uh, I, you know, the East guys, I used to play, you know, golf with Jordan Kalinske. So, um, you know, just what do you remember uh, about the connection between not only your team, but the, the people in the area and how that affected your high school training? Yeah, we had a really good culture. You know, I mean, we, we hated each other at times, but we, Aside from those little moments, it was it was like a big brotherhood. You know, you go down state, you're cheering for everybody. We used to do a couple of years. We had the Northern Illinois Mat Club, and you know, we all know in the last 10, 15 years, the club scene has just exploded, and that's really where you see these pockets of, you know, Western Pennsylvania, Chicago, Northern Illinois. These really do well as you know, clubs like like Overtime. You know, was one of the first ones. But um, yeah, we used to get together. Remember, we used to do one day at East, one day, at, you know, just switch couple days a week i mean me and used to i remember going i can vividly remember us going at it in the east room uh, yeah. and and you know it was it was not special nowadays it's all so fancy you got to put your pinky here and i'm all about technique you know I, i'll talk technique but you just warm up for a little while drill for a little while and then we just started wrestling group yeah. three one-on-one i mean we just go for 10 or 20 minutes switch go and i remember staying there okay it's 9 9 30 at night and we leave all right see, see you next yeah. week well, I remember coaching back in the day is that after regionals, uh, everybody would come together and train during before sectionals. Mm-hmm. And then everybody, like the conference, we'd go like yeah. down to Jefferson, we'd go down to Guilford, and then the kids who qualified for state, they all stuck around and they still trained for, together. And it was illegal as hell, but it was great. I mean, that's yeah. where you got to see the really good wrestlers and, you know, people got to learn from each other. Absolutely. I, yeah, I think that that was awesome. Great tradition. You know, really, you just, it's club. That's how you, yeah. you know, that's how you have to position things. There's a club. Yeah. You know, somebody pays the USA charter and puts the certificate up on the wall and they you got the money yeah, I think, the wrestling club. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I asked Marty a while ago when the, when the Marty Kaiser wrestling 
uh, Jim is coming, but we've talked about it. Like we've talked, I, you know, I've, I'm currently trying to, um, uh, grow a community big enough to support something like that. Obviously, um, there, there are challenges with, uh, stuff like that, but I do think that to help, to, to create that culture again, I think we need to have a place where we, you know, compete and battle against one another and push each other and stuff like that. Well, alpha has been a good, uh, you know, it's been a steady room. I know they, they are open in the spring, but I know there's, in the, in the summer uh, at East, Gene's been doing that for, for years. I know there's um, – but I think Albert has a good club. I don't really know, but there's there's definitely enough clubs to – you just got to find those pockets well, that, hey, on Tuesday nights we're going to show up here or yeah. whatever. Well, no, I guess what I would refer to is there there, there has to be a, a, a larger high school population of wrestling. Um, oh, you yeah. haven't come, come back to uh, one of the conference tournaments of, as of late, but, uh, you know, the conference tournament is – you know, it, it, this last one was pretty good as far as like, uh, I think, I mean, one we talked about, we, we, we were there, we broadcasted it and it was actually a pretty good turnout. And even on a, it was a snowstorm. Marty, you remember that? It was a big snowstorm. Yeah. Down in Harlem too. Yeah. At Harlem. And, um, it's not to say that there aren't athletes necessarily, but they're not the guys that were into it you know, year round, right. Who, who wanted to get to the highest level of wrestling, um, that culture necessarily isn't there one. I mean, as a high school coach, I, I would hear a lot of people constantly talking about encouraging people to do other sports. Um, and I'm not necessarily thinking, I don't think kids shouldn't do other sports if they want to do other sports, but wrestling was my, my thing. That's all I wanted to do. And, um, it, it's what made, a competitive um, athlete, I guess. So, uh, yeah, I guess from that standpoint, you know, how many kids went to Fargo? You know, we had uh, I, a couple. How many placed or or All American? Not a lot. Um, if if zero, I know Tennyson didn't place. Um, he didn't make weight though. Um, uh, Jimmy Masney from uh, the area but that was cadet. That's a younger, I'm talking, you know, junior, senior in high school. So we've got some work to do as far as getting uh, groups of elite level, you know, minded people to build a, uh, a competitive culture around, but I think it's possible. That's for sure. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, yeah, I, I mean, go ahead. I, I think one of the big things is back in the day, back when you guys were around, every coach wanted to win. Like they were, they wanted that. We, I didn't care if they're the Auburn coach, whoever they wanted to win. You know, now I don't know if that's just like, if they just want to serve some home, just look like they want to survive the season. Like, you know, they want to coach, make a little money. Yeah. Back then we didn't care about the money. We cared about wrestling. We yeah. cared about, you know, I mean, that was our, my, was my passion. My wife was part of it. I mean, it was all about a family thing and that, that's just what it was. Yeah, it's, it's got to be culture, you know. I mean, yeah, I, I'm I've been in some rooms over the past, you know, five ten years, and some some places still have it, I'm in in Illinois or other places, and some places just don't. You go in to run a practice somewhere at the place that hasn't been run right, and kids just look at you. You know, they can't even do their cartwheels or or hand right. fight. You know what I mean? That you can't come in and fix that, but you you go in a certain room certain part of the country and you got 30, 40 kids and they're looking right at you and doing whatever. <laughs> yeah. You can't, you can't teach that. No, you yeah. can't. You gotta, it's gotta be built in the room. Yeah. It's Marty and I, 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 I spoke, you know, I, I've been lucky enough to, to mentor around a lot of coaches and stuff. And so you get to see what really good people have done to make um, successful programs and stuff. And, um, Marty and I have talked about this, like being able to run a practice um, and and motivate kids, right? I mean, it is so hard for people not to focus on the problem, right, in a practice, right? So think about a head coach, uh, you know, on a typical day, how many kids come in and say, um, you know, my grades are, you know, these great, you find out the grades and stuff, or or you have something else going on. It's really hard to be a motivated uh, motivator, right? Uh, because you got a lot of negative. So I think it's, it's, it's so important for a coach to, to know that they're the person that navigates the room like an orchestra and motivates the athletes to, to 
push themselves. And that's through a competitive mindset. So I, I do think that uh, Marty is 100% right. Like, you know, it, it, it's got to be um, created, but, you know, it's it's just a less. I don't know, Marty, where exactly did you really pick up on your understanding of the practice room? My high school wrestling coach. Okay. Yeah. I mean, he was he was a three time All American at UNI. He used to be Iowa Teachers College back then. But yeah, I learned from him. I learned some things that were great, great, and some things I didn't want to use, you know. And uh, and then I just, I mean, I caught on real quick when I became the coach, head coach at 24 years old. I'm like, well, I figured if they're not the best wrestlers, I'm at least going to make them tough and in good shape. And yeah. then they then eventually we got some good wrestlers too. So. But, you know, that one of the hardest things as a coach was the day before a duel or a day before a tournament, when you have a good team, you got guys cutting weight, keeping those guys motivated and make sure they make weight is just was a tough thing as a head coach, you know, as in high school, because there's so many variables yeah. that go on. Yeah, there's so much. I mean, uh, the, the other thing I was going to ask you specifically, like, where did you pick up or did you just innately think about this? But you, I, whenever I was in the room, you'd, you'd always say good job, men, great job, men. You'd always like reaffirm like, um, uh, one manhood, right? Like you used mm -hmm. to like, you know, call people men when they were clearly not men, but they mm -hmm. were acting like men. Like, where did you get that? From, I think almost that my very first year of coaching, you know, the kids didn't really know anything. And, I figured if I'm going to at least get these guys to, they got to be able to believe in themselves, you know? And you, if you tell somebody, and this is our son, every night my wife put my son to bed, I heard her say, you're going to, you're a great person, Nate. You're going to have a great life. It's just, you're going to be great. So why not use the word great, right? I still use it sometimes to overkill, you know, everything's great. But in the restroom, I said it all the time, because if you can in, tell them and eventually say, hey, you know, that wall over there, you'll run through it someday, you know, and someday they will, but it just, yeah. you got to make them feel good because you don't know their home life. Sometimes, sometimes maybe those kids are getting beat down at home or they're not very good at school and, but they walk in that wrestling room. They're great. You're a great kid. You're in this room. One of our principals said it was the melting pot of the school because we had every ethnicity, every ability. We had kids that went on to be doctors and we had kids that went on to be a tradesperson. We had kids that went on to do other things, but you know, it's just, it was a melting pot that they could come in there and feel comfortable and know that they're going to just get tough. Yeah. Yeah. This is why it was easy. I mean, it, we, this is what um, we'll have to figure out a way to figure out how to bottle that up and, and teach people how to think about coaching. You know, I've, I've been trying to do that and, um, and uh, it always needs more, uh, people to kind of explain that, but, uh, Chad, before we, uh, let you go and we finish this up, um, yeah. What do you, what are you excited about as far as wrestling in your future? And then the future of wrestling itself? Uh, well, my son's five and my daughter's two and my daughter's got a pretty good single leg. So, you know, I'm just <laughs> trying to, uh, stay in the sport and, uh, you know, help support my wife as much as I can. She's been coaching at the college level now. And, uh, just trying to build a program here in Erie. We're an hour away from my wife's family. So it's, you know, maybe a permanent spot here. It's pretty nice, uh, more Midwest feel. Uh, just really growing the sport. I mean, you know, people that in the know know that women's wrestling helps save men's wrestling. You know, uh, initially Title IX did some damage, but women's wrestling really helped bring it back and cement programs. If you have a women's program, you're never going to get dropped. If you have a men's and a woman's, I mean, there's there's no excuse for it to be dropped anymore. We're seeing a lot more colleges adding. So um, just, you know, growing the sport and then uh, growing the sport in Greco too. Uh, you know, we, we went from winning the world title in 07 to we haven't had a world champion since Joe Warren almost 20 years ago. So uh, Greco is very, very hard. It's very hard. That's the bottom line. So we need more opportunities. We only have one international tournament now. So I st I'm starting a tournament in January. It's called the American Open. We're going to do it in the Erie PA. Uh, it's going to be junior uh, high school division, cadets and juniors together, and then seniors. So all three styles. I've got about 10 or 12 countries interested. I'm writing my visa letters. I got uh, some places interested, not hard commits, but Valiant Prep and some other places want to come. So uh, I, go, I got clarification that the Pennsylvania kids can wrestle in it since it's a club event, USA sanctioned. So uh, if anybody wants to come out, 
I know it's during the middle of, of folk season, but the spring's just so busy. There's really no date. So um, trying to grow the sport. Uh, eventually we might have a, a Greco resident team here, but you know, really the, the best wrestler does all three styles. So just, just trying to bring that Greco element back in. And um, most of our best Greco guys were all NCAA guys, you know, they, all, they, they went through the grinder. Maybe they weren't two and three time champions, but they were all Americans and they, they went into Greco and I just want to want to maybe try to give a couple opportunities for people to do that, you know, because if you can't wrestle in it, how the hell are you going to win in the world? If, if you don't have any tournaments. Yeah. Yeah. Tournaments are necessary. Uh, Morty, do you have anything um, left to ask no, Chad? I, and, I and just Chad? Think, yeah, go ahead. I just think it's awesome because I was a Greco guy in high school, Chad, back in the early eighties and the seventies. And there wasn't much, but every time I went to a tournament, I wrestled both styles. And the, how I learned was like, I just went and said, oh, yeah, I'll wrestle Greco and got thrown around all over. And after a while, you start to figure it out. But it's it correlates into high school. It correlates into folk style, too, because those guys are brutal hand fighters. I mean, yeah. it just uh, it's awesome. I just watched the world championships. I stayed up to watch free or I woke up to watch freestyle and I watched all of Greco, too. It was awesome. Yeah, some some amazing athletes in both styles. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. My former teammate, uh, Joe Rao, uh, my for, former college teammate, Joe Rao, he, he wrestles and he's, you know, I've, he's put his hands on me. I've never, ever wanted to wrestle him after he, he does. He's so strong, so, so good. Um, and he still is, you know, falling short a little bit to these guys. And it's like amazing. It's uh yeah, it's, it's tough sport. So. Yeah, yeah, Greco Roman um, is very popular all around the world. You know, every country that does freestyle mostly has a Greco team, but there's a lot of places that only have a Greco team. You know, I've been to Sweden and Denmark, and you know, I ask, well, why is there no men's freestyle division? They say, well, men wrestle Greco Roman and women wrestle freestyle. It's a joke. <laughs> it's a joke. You know what I mean? And there are countries know, that but... do. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, you know, I would ask this, like. uh like, do you think the, um, yeah, Marty, do you have, you guys still have a few minutes? I'll ask you yeah. one last question. I got all the time in the world. All right. So the, the last question, um, do you think, so I've been to high school tournaments and as a coach, one of the frustrating things is the referee doesn't even let hard wrestling happen that much because they think it's fighting and, right. and it kind of is, but well, of it's, it is. you know, it's in the rules. So right. do you think even, um, that component of of wrestling has does not contribute to more aggressive hand fighters to want to i mean obviously division one at the semifinals final they're wrestling they know what hand fighting looks like right but just thinking about the high school kids that could have actual opportunity to uh, a different um style uh, it's like they they're already handcuffed because they they're not allowed to hand fight at you know Belvedere versus Hananiga because the guy doesn't know what's going on. And, um, you know, I've seen that all too often. That's my. Everything my... evolves around hand fighting and wrestling. Yeah. I mean, so how do you, how Dad, do you would get you agree? people to understand it? Yeah. I mean, try to get some, some of his legs in college without hand fighting. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> I don't, how do you get somebody? I don't, I mean, how do you, how do you tell somebody that they're not, trying to fight each other they're just smacking each other around and heavy hands on their head snapping i mean it's hard to tell somebody that doesn't understand the sport yeah you know and yeah and and so again back to that thing i think that's some of the troubles of wrestling that we're I, i'm trying to figure out like how do you solve that right obviously uh, being an official is one component right who wants to be an official when you could right. be a coach or something yeah and then or, the ones that, that at that, home <laughs> yeah or just sit at home <laughs> Um, but like then the ones you, you have to get are not trained to understand or recognize wrestling because they're not wrestlers. Um, it just is a, it's one of the things that I, I get frustrated on and I don't know the solution to it, but I love hand fighting. I wrestled two, I wrestled a kid today is a state finalist in three a and his hand fighting is non-existent. Like he doesn't understand hand fighting yet. And I'm, it's not his fault. It's because a lot of times when you're coaching athletes either one they just wrestle live a lot or uh, a lot of coaches press upon the idea of shooting and scoring and shooting and scoring and they don't 
learn how to set anything up because at youth, if you just shoot at the youth level, you can win, right? And it, it works out for guys, but they don't transition well at the at at the high school, uh, later high school years, and then college because they're not grinding with people. You know, I didn't know much about wrestling. I just knew that I should fight somebody, right? Like I, I the guys that I wrestled in in high school at the state tournament, most of them were better than me skill wise. They knew how to drill. They, you know, they had all the stuff. But I just figured if we we're gonna wrestle. We're going to wrestle. You got to get through my hands and fists. And so, you know, that's how I approach wrestling. Um, I, I'm curious about today if, if how many times I would have got like penalty. Yeah, take, take it to, right to the edge of the rules, I guess. That's, that's how we yeah. always were told to wrestle, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, just aggressive, I think, would be. Um, it's just interesting how things change over time marty knows about that you know there's always you always have a couple a couple tricks up your sleeve take it right to the edge of the rules yeah i did i did yeah yeah well guys um yeah it was good seeing you chad uh yeah. i i hope all is well you, you sounds like you have uh, a few uh kids now and you're busy with coaching and wrestling um yeah, let us know whenever you're back uh, in the area. We can we can go to uh, a different golf course and play some play some golf. Yeah, yeah, sounds good. We're we're six hours east, so if you ever get out this way, I'm in Erie, Pennsylvania. So uh, go ahead and follow Gannon Women's Wrestling. See see what they can do this year. So uh, excited for my wife, and uh, yeah, uh, maybe this summer get out and if I get home, we could do something. Or I I usually pop in the Harlem room or the Alpha room when I when I get back home. So. If, cool. if if there's some wrestling going on in June or July when I visit, I'd be happy to stop in. That'd be awesome. A pleasure yeah, seeing you, man. Be. Great talking to you. Yeah. Yeah, awesome sounds good. Your, and it's great to hear your history, too. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I just appreciate, you know, the, the wrestling culture because I've seen people come from different areas or you go out in different states and it just isn't like that. So, and And I guess maybe it's not where it was then now, but – I'm sure it still has a good base, so you guys can build it back up. Absolutely. Chad, thanks. Uh, good talking to you. Yep. Take care, guys. You bet. Thank you.